<clears throat> Hi all, it's Jim. Thanks to everyone who made it to this memorial gathering. Nancy and I really wish we could be there. And thanks Diane Russ and their family and John and Mona and their family for all that you did to make this happen. I think of the 92 year journey that Don and June had and how much of it they had together and how we can marvel at all they saw and all they accomplished and be very proud of them. I think of them often and I miss them. I miss mom's ability to listen. She taught us a lot about how to be empathetic people, to put ourselves in other people's shoes and think about what they were feeling. She took the side of people who were mistreated, whether it was one of her own children or someone that one of her own children was being mean to. She was part of the first generation of Nolans to complete college. And in fact, we went to her 60th college reunion in 2009. And while raising three children, she went back to school and got her master's and started a new career. She helped us to see that we could do amazing things if we put our minds to it. I miss dad's stories, how they would amuse his nieces and nephews and grandchildren. We were amazed at the details he would remember of long ago events. He remembered that when Orson Welles did his infamous War of the Worlds radio, radio broadcast and people thought it was a real invasion from Mars, his parents came upstairs and sprinkled holy water on their children. I knew that Grandma and Grandpa Riley would pray a nightly rosary during World War II. Dad told me the exact date in October 1943 that they started doing that. It was a certain saint's day. I wish I could remember which one. And when he was in the service in the 1950s, he saw an A-bomb on a flatbed truck at an army base. When Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev came to the U.S., Dad saw him in a hotel room window in Pittsburgh and waved to him, and Khrushchev waved back. And he saw one of the popes go by in a motorcade in New York City. And much later in their lives, after they had moved to St. Louis, Mom and Dad attended a mass celebrated by Pope John Paul II at Bush Stadium. Thanks to their neighbor who had season tickets, they heard the mass from a luxurious skybox and had communion delivered right to the skybox door. There were so many good things about their years in St. Louis. Satisfying jobs, a beautiful home, more time with the Fentons, the means to travel, volunteer work that changed a lot of people's lives. And it was toward the end of those years at their 50th anniversary party that they met Nancy, who later became my wife. I was so glad they had those years. And when things got tough later, we can thank Diane and Russ and Riley and Grace and all they did to make those last years more comfortable and happy. Mom and Dad made sure we knew our families. When we were kids, we visited our grandparents in Youngstown, Ohio and Queens, New York. We visited our Nolan cousins in Pittsburgh, our Fenton cousins in Columbus and Kansas City, and we had many holidays with our McAllister cousins who lived right through the woods in New Jersey. And they all came to visit us, even one time our Riley cousins from California. Mom and Dad taught us so much about the good things that come from hard work. They taught us how to be citizens and neighbors and family members and friends. They got along with just about everybody. I'm proud to be part of the big extended family that they helped to shape part of all of you. Nancy and I hope to see you soon.